All right. Hey, I'm Alex. Some of you know me as the Delicious Meats, and this is take 3,072 of me doing my first little stream of how to make tokens uh, out of images for DIY D&D. &D. All right. So first things first, you need an image. Uh, the ones on D&D &D Beyond are usually pretty good because these actually have transparent backgrounds. So we're going to click it. Get the full resolution bad boy, save image as. And now I've done this, I think about 20 times, trying to get this tutorial set up. Uh, yeah, I'll replace that. Um, I've done a lot of times. Because I, I am new to this, so this is uh, a new thing for me, but um, it's a lot of fun and some people had asked. So I'm gonna load it into Photoshop, because I use Photoshop, you can use the uh, application of your choice. First things first, I'm gonna create a layer and I'm going to uh, color that white. Now, you can do different colors, and the different colors have actually a reason behind them. So if I do this layer white, now there's still the transparency back there, uh, this is actually going to raise this kind of border around the final um, token. And I want that, in my case, to be as high as possible to make them a little thicker, a little heavier, and just look a little nicer. Then I am going to, you can also use, for example, any other color you're gonna use in this. We're gonna use yellow, red, and black. And I'm gonna show you what the difference looks like in the final product uh, between the different background colors. So we're gonna take the elliptical marquee tool. Ooh, fancy name. And then we're going to do fixed ratio to keep it the same ratio. And then we're only gonna select what is probably going to make, ooh, whoops. Ah, what is going to make kind of the, the, be the best, the biggest impression of it, right? Because our mini is only going to be about an inch big. Yeah, so let's select that one. And then we're gonna to need to right click, select inverse, and we're gonna hit the delete key to delete everything around it. And then we're going to go to layer two, and we're gonna do the uh, same thing, hit that uh, wonderful delete key. And uh, just like that, we have our main little bit of the Helmed Horror. Then we're gonna right click and then hit deselect. And then we're gonna to go to image, trim, top left pixel color, and hit okay. And that is going to center the image and trim off anything we don't need. Then making sure we're actually still in this layer, we're going to go to image, adjustments, hue saturation, and we are absolutely gonna make this guy look like Mardi Gras. Now there's a reason for this. We are trying to get a little separation between the red, the yellow, and the background, and the black, which is gonna give us our definition there. Hit okay. And then we're gonna hit file, save a copy. Not regular save, but save a copy. Save it as PNG. We're gonna save this Helmed Horror, horror Tutorial. And yeah, I'll replace that because I've done those 20, 30 times a lot. Um, I was originally trying to use VLC as screen capture and that was not so good. So we're gonna open up Hueforge and then we are going to just drag in this tutorial. Boom, 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 boom. All right, next out of here. And uh, a few things are wrong here. So first things first, we are making this as, oh, hey, it kept my settings. Isn't that nice? Uh, we need to make sure the width is set to 25. Uh, and height is set 25. I think the default is 200. Um, and then we're gonna make sure the detail size is half our nozzle size. So I have a 0 0.2 nozzle, so I'm gonna use a 0 0.10 and make sure the layer height and the base layer are correct. My layer height's 0 0.04, my base layer is 0 0.08. Now you can do thicker, you can do use it with a 0 0.4 nozzle and set this to 0 0.2, uh, whatever you want. I'm making sure this is a normal mode and uh, yeah, always really much because I sometimes I forget. Now this is my palette here. Um, we are starting out with just a uh, charcoal black and poly light white. But in my case, this is actually J.O. Um, because for some reason I have trouble with stringing on the white and I don't know why. They have different transmission differences, but for the black and white ones I'm doing currently right now, um, it is about the same. Now you'll notice this is actually a 3D structure that has been generated by the image. It is not a color match. It is not matched by color, at least not yet. And uh, first off, what I'll start off by doing is I'll start off by getting our layers about right. So this, in this case, I know having done this a few times, that needs to be about at 20. So I now have my black and white, but it's a helm tour. So we want a little red in here and we're gonna want probably some yellow for that wonderful gold. I'm using the polylight red and the polylight lemon yellow. So popping up here. Yeah, because we want a little red kind of like shining through here and here. And then we want, yeah, there. We're going to kind of adjust these down so we get what we want. Yeah. 
is uh, the reason why this is all changing is because when I adjust the white, it's adjusting the total height of the model, which gives us a little more room to work with. So if I want more red, I can get more red. If I want a little more yellow, I can get more yellow. This kind of looks about right. Uh, is the black good? And go up one more level so that it just you can see the real fire coming out. Now, remember when I made the backgrounds different colors in the uh, Photoshop? The backgrounds, I usually do corresponding to different colors on the print to make them different heights. If you make it white, which is usually your top layer, this border is going to be tall. I like the borders tall because it makes the thing a little thicker. Um, if you make it, for example, the yellow for the background, it's not going to color match, so it's not exactly going to go to the yellow. It's not going to be yellow, but it is going to be um, a little taller. The red is going to make it shorter, and the black is going to make it shortest. Um, so be going by just what's going, it's going to usually end up being the color of your base color or your top color. So uh, if it's either the red or the black in the Photoshop, and once again, I'm talking about this coloration right here, it is going to end up being um, different heights in the final product, which I will show you. So hit File, Save Project As. We're going to save this as our wonderful Helm Horror tutorial for the uh, 20th, 30th time. And then we're going to open it up in uh, Bamboo Studio, whatever they're calling it these days, or Orca, whatever you like. Um, and then we're going to open up that STL. And do to do to do. It's going to create this little file here. And it is not actually square. That is just a zero layer height thing. Um, that's just going to disappear when we slice it. So we're going to make sure first that we have the right colors. We've got the black, red, yellow, white in order. Um, this will actually be. Scale white. All right, make sure the layer heights match because by default, they are not the same as uh, what I'm using right now. Usually, I think this is a 0.16, it's 0.08 um, for the first layer and layer height. So make sure that's there. And once you do have them set, you go to options and save defaults. So that's going to make your life easier. I'm also going to set this to slicer mode, which is going to show what it looks like in the slicer and tell it to describe, which I'm going to put over here so I can see it. So hit slice plate, and it's going to be the base color first. Or you just right click it and change that. Ooh, what is new? What's going on here? Interesting. There must be a spec or something there. But that's not really going to matter to our purposes here. So we're just going to add layer 21. We're going to swap to red. And then at layer 26, just following what it says in this dialog here, we're going to swap to a lemon yellow. You have to reslice each time. Some people, if they have a slower computer, they don't like doing that a lot. We'll just put a little uh, primitive block there uh, and then just change the layer heights on that instead of reslicing constantly because this is a very complex model. All right, slice plate. Probably hear the printers going off in the background. And uh, that's our our, our, our our ghosty boy here. All right. So we've got our thing. I'm going to check it against here and see if these look about right. Do they look about right? So, yeah. That's about right. That's about right. That's about right. Now, sometimes your layer height, depending on your settings, it's kind of a known glitch. I don't know why. Um, if you sometimes things just look wrong. So if it says, for example, if everything looks just one layer off, go to describe and see how this says uh, layer 26. Uh, sometimes, just for whatever reason, you might have to put that at layer 27 instead of 26. Don't know why. Uh, usually it works properly, but sometimes you're just one layer off. It might have to do with dynamic depth. Who knows? But if your things are looking just slightly off, uh, try adding um, instead of at the... Um, Back to you. Uh, yes, it's because I've got to do this. I've got to let it open. So instead of sometimes doing it 21, uh, at layer 22, swap to red. So if that looks weird. Um, settings. Okay, so I do not do a prime tower. You don't need it. You're basically printing on a puck. You also, for support, I don't do that, but I do do an outer brim, no skirt. Uh, speed, I do it slow and low for the first layer and then speed her up. I've not had any issues with my particular machine. It's going to be 100% infill with two wall loops and quality. Once again, just make sure your layer height is there. Now, you can, if you want to kind of tune this a little bit and make this a little thinner, 
uh, which will give you more detail, but it can cause you issues later. So just keep that in mind. Now, I, as I promised earlier, oh, before we do that, let me show you something really cool. So we want a border on this bad boy because otherwise the edges are way thin. So we're going to add a part. Uh, we are going to add a little thing I catted up, which is just a border ring. It's 24 millimeters on the inside, uh, 26 millimeters on the outside, and 5 millimeters tall. And it's just going to, because we took the time to trim and center this in its thing, uh, it is going to, when we go to preview, slice it up, not mess up all our stuff. So as you can see, it kind of cropped it by like one millimeter, um, but that means that this is edge to edge. And remember what I said about how the borders are taller? So because I made this border white, um, or rather made it white in Photoshop, uh, it is taller and it gives a little depth to it and makes this thing a little thicker overall. And I like that, as long as white looks right with your um, creature you're making. And I'm gonna show you the difference here between the different um, border colors on the actual image you make and how that correlates to um, the height of that border there and why you might do things differently. So as you can see here, with the white with the black border, um, which is the lower one, because it's corresponds to layer height here, um, it is actually the white just kind of looks a little bit on average, like not a lot going on. I also find for some reason like maybe it prints a little cleaner, probably because it has that white. I think also having this border here gives it that little white, makes it a little cleaner. So as we go up layer by layer, we're gonna find that the difference, so when I made it black in Photoshop, that's this guy here, uh, that vanishes, that's very low. And then the one I made red is gonna go next. The one here, that goes. Um, and then the one I made yellow. It does not necessarily co correspond to color. It is of the filament itself. It's just going to um, be where that ended up in the STL that's generated. Because depending on the background color, this part is going to be higher in the STL it makes. See how yellow went? And then white's gonna go right after that. So this is how you create tokens with borders. And I'm gonna walk you through it once again really quick. Um, all, as always, you just hit print. And uh, right now I've got some wonderful Maroots printing in my plate, so this is not corresponding to the right colors. Uh, if you wanna check out those bad boys, I think I've got them loaded. Yeah, look at these gorgeous things. Black and white is another thing that just looks really good for a lot of stuff. Uh, some things just do not come out well in color um, with this palette because it doesn't color match. Uh, you kind of have to do that yourself. So loading, 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 loading. Hopefully I didn't mess things up in the background. And yeah, these are my lovely Maroots. And uh, yeah. The bigger uh, creatures are often easier to do in higher in detail too because these are large creatures, so they're 50 millimeter discs and um, like all the way up to huge and uh, gigantic or gargantuan. I always mix this up because uh, I'm bad at things. All right, I'm gonna walk you through real quick through the tutorial, start to finish again. So uh, it's like a minute. So find an image you like, pick it up, save it, save image as, save it as a PNG, go into Photoshop, load it up. You're gonna create a second layer. Now you're gonna uh, bucket to make that layer white, that second layer, not your original layer. You're gonna go to elliptical marquee tool. You're gonna select it. You're gonna make sure it's fixed ratio, select what you want. And you wanna keep it in on the main details because this guy's gonna be small. Uh, then you're gonna right click to uh, inverse selection. You're gonna hit the delete key to delete the background, go to the next layer, delete the background, go back up, you're gonna go to image and then you're gonna go to um, trim, top left pixel color, hit okay. Boom, that'll trim that to this. And then you're gonna go to making sure that you have this selected, go to image, adjustments, use saturation, and you're gonna blow that way up, all right? And then you're gonna save as a copy using PNG is usually what I use. Uh, you're gonna save that bad boy. And then you're gonna open up Hueforge. You're going to take your copy that you saved it. You're just gonna drag that bad boy in there or select it from here. You're gonna check your settings to make sure that the layer height matches what you have in your slicer. You don't have to use my settings, but um, I'm using a 0.2 nozzle. So if you're using a 0.2 nozzle, the settings are probably gonna be the same. Detail size is always half the nozzle. The width and height is going to be uh, the size of your critter. So for a medium creature, it's gonna be the 0.25, which is about an inch. We're then going to, um, making sure this is all right. Let's just go back to normal setting. You're going to then drag over the colors you're using, pick the middle colors to the colors that are like the color, that usually starting with the black and the white, basically. Adjust those to where you want it, add in the other colors. Um, then you're going to, once it looks good, make sure everything, once again, is right. File, save project as, save that project open it up in your wonderful slicer program. In my case, it's Bamboo. 
uh, and then you're going to just loading in the SPL itself. You are going to then slice it, hit go per, do do do, boom, add it in, go to preview, slice it, making sure that everything matches, and then you're going to add in your colors as they are described in the description thing on Viewforge. Do to do to do, just gonna open this window, which is gonna beep at me every time I try and click Viewforge, besides it. So making sure these match. 21, 26, 34. If for whatever reason they are, things look just a little bit janky, um, they can sometimes be one off. That was an old glitch. It sometimes is preserved in the current one. Uh, maybe you're reading this in the, listening to this in the future and you don't have that problem. If so, that's great. All right, and then you go back to repair. And then for my case, I add that border. So I go to add part, load. It's a little STL I made in um, Fusion 360. Uh, 25 millimeter ring. It's actually 24 millimeters on the inside and 26 on the outside, so I have full coverage. And then you're going to preview again, make sure it all looks good, make sure nothing moved, and then you're just going to print as normal. So that is, in so many words, how to get a uh, make a little token from an image. Uh, and uh, man, it's a nice little little more rates here. So I hope this has been helpful. And uh, if you want more content or want to help me grow my channel, just like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, this has been Alex signing off.